Hello everyone, my name is Doug Hills and this is the Manga Studio Guide. On this episode, I'm going to cover how you can take 3D models from outside of Manga Studio and import them into the program. This is a refresh of a previous video I'd made for Smith Micro, as there have been a few changes on how this feature works. So I'm going to talk about how you can import your models, adjust them as needed, and ultimately register them to materials so you can easily recall them whenever you need them. Before I get started, I need to discuss one important thing about importing your models. There are only two types of models that are compatible with the program, object files, .obj, and lightweight files, .lwl. This means that if you're using any models from programs like SketchUp or 3D Studio Max, you will need to convert them first to either of the compatible file types. With that said, let's start importing some objects. The process of importing a model into Manga Studio is extremely simple. Coming to my desktop, all I have to do is select my LWO file or my object file and drag them onto the page. I'll drag both on to, to show the differences between the two. There's my LWO file, and here's my .obj file. Now you'll notice that they kind of look like an F14, but in the case of this Lightwave model, you're getting a faint outline, and in the case of the object file, you're only getting a gray silhouette. Manga Studio provides the ability now with 3D models to turn on a light source so you can make these 3D models pop, for lack of a better term. The first thing you will need to do is select the Object Select tool, and then coming down to the Tool Properties palette, I'm coming down to where it says Light Source. And I check that, and now all of a sudden my 3D models look like 3D models. And I can adjust the position of the light source by clicking and dragging the light source on this ball here. And if you don't see the ball by default, like when you come down to the Tool Properties palette, it may be minimized. Click on the plus button here, and it'll bring up the light source ball. In order to adjust the scale of the model, you would select the model that you're working on, and then come down to where it says Object Scale, and then Reduce until the model is about the size that you want it. And this is important to note because sometimes when you bring in a model, it may be extremely large depending on how the model was created. So it may be bigger than the canvas you're working on. And the same thing with the LWO file. Select that and we'll reduce the scale. And now I can manipulate the model by moving it using the 3D launcher here. And then I can adjust the rotation either using these buttons here or by clicking and dragging any of the model axes here, X, Y, or Z. Now, if your model happens to have a skin associated with it, you can also bring that into Manga Studio. The easiest means to do this is to compress them into a zip file. With the LWO file, it just needs to be the Lightwave model object and its associated image files for the skin. With the object file, you need the object file, you need its associated skin images, and you may need a .mtl file that helps Manga Studio define what the skin is and where it goes on the model. The process is just as simple as importing the object. Just click on the zip file and drag it over. And now I have my two models, and they look like models. And I don't need to use the light source function to actually see what the models look like. If you still want to have that, you can turn on the light source and have that additional feature to make your model pop. And I have to thank Rick Rodriguez over at surfaceproartist.com for finding out this idea of combining your model with the skin into a zip file to bring into Manga Studio. Now, in order for me to register my object file here, I would select it, then come up to the main menu and select Edit, Register Image as Material. And this brings up the Material Properties dialog box. All I need to do is navigate to the place in the materials folder that I want to place my new 3D model. I can change the name. I'll just change it to F14 and press OK. And that's it. If I open up the materials folder, I now have my F14 right there, ready to just drag right onto the page as many times as I want. Now before I go, I want to note that these objects that we're importing will not be as robust as their Manga Studio counterparts. With object files, it is just a solid object. It is almost like a resin model or a die cast model. It has no moving parts whatsoever. So while I can rotate the model however I see fit, I couldn't adjust the wings or I couldn't raise the cockpit or anything like that. With Lightwave files, you actually can have access to the individual parts. So I can actually select the cockpit or I can select the wings, so I could adjust those parts if I wanted to. However, unlike the native 3D models in Manga Studio, there is no parent-child relationship. So if I adjusted, like, say, this part, this part won't go with it. It would just be this part. More importantly, I can't reposition the fighter as a whole. Unlike this one where it's just one solid part, it is separate parts. So I would have to move each part individually 
in order to reposition it. The easier method in this case would be to rescale the model and then use the camera tools to adjust the, the positioning of the, the fighter on the, on the canvas. My suggestion is to experiment with the two different types of models and see which works best for you for your particular needs within the program. That said, as you can tell, it is very, very simple to bring in an external 3D object or light wave model into Mongo Studio and you have that many more models to work with as you plan out your scene or have some nice model reference as you create your comic. And with that, I'll wrap up this episode, which was brought to you by Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. Thanks, everybody. If you like the Manga Studio Guide and would like to help me keep these videos free for everybody forever, you can subscribe for as little as a penny per video through Patreon. Or you can purchase books, page templates, rulers, or just throw a few bucks in the tip jar on my Shopify store. Thank you all for your support and for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.